Good morning. Today we're gonna go from this. This is the mother. So it's from, I think, 2016. I'm gonna show you how to get from this to this. If you go on YouTube and you Google this shit, the complexity and the intricacy of some of these fools at home making this stuff. Like, we need to cut all the corners we can without compromising quality. Disclaimer, is this the most beautiful loaf of sourdough bread I've ever seen in my life? No, you know, I'm still learning and we can, we can learn together. I am starting this in the morning. So I have plenty of time. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna bake until tomorrow morning. But I wanna discuss some terms I'm gonna use. Uh, primary fermentation, also known as bulk fermentation, also known as the first fermentation. We're going to do the, the primary, which is when we mix everything together, including you know the mother with the, with the flour and the water and the salt. Once we do that, you let that kind of rest and heat up a little bit and you fold it a few times and you let it kind of like, it just, you really, you literally feed feed this. It's really quite interesting to watch this kind of thing live and breathe and then thrive. So it's, that's an interesting component that we will, we will definitely go over. Uh, that's the primary fermentation. Then you shape it. Then we'll, we'll cut it up, just cut it in half, and then shape it into loaves. And then that's gonna be the long ferment. That's gonna be the secondary fermentation. Now the important part of the secondary fermentation is that it has a long, and this is optional, but highly suggested that you should uh, do the long secondary fermentation in the refrigerator overnight. Like all kinds of cool scientific stuff that I can only remember half the shit happens where the yeast breaks down, basically the flour breaks down into like different enzyme with different properties and you get like this nice like kind of almost red color from, from longer ferments. This is a four ingredient, so it's rye flour, white flour, water salt and it's just really cool i mean you end up getting something quite interesting four fucking ingredients like this is a rye starter a little backstory on rye flour it's a pain in the ass to find rye flour is a strange one it's pretty much gluten free when when you when you feed it, it doesn't have this amazing dramatic doubling that you'll see with a white flour or even a um or even a, a wholemeal flour it just kind of does its thing. And so it's strange, when you look at it, it doesn't have that gratifying, oh, it's alive, it just kind of like, and it feels weird, it's like slippery, almost like mud or clay, but it's powerful. For this, you're gonna need rye flour, white flour, they need bread flour too, it needs to be between, I gotta Google this too, but I think 12 and 14% protein. Can't fuck around with all-purpose flour. You, you need to get bread flour. Um, the problem with these flours around the world, depending on what country you're watching this in, is it's gonna have different different names for it. Try to find a percentage of protein between 12 and 14, and then you, you're cooking with the right gas, so to speak. Don't get white rye flour, don't get bleached rye flour. It doesn't have the same punch either, so dark rye flour, which is just, that's the color of rye grain, and then, um, 12 to 18% flour for making bread, water, salt. There's a weird part of this recipe where you kind of spin up the, the starter with a bit of beer. So 500 grams of the starter. And you start, yeah, sorry, so I need to add beer. All right, so those two ingredients are added that I forgot. Equipment needed, you'll need a mixer, you'll need a scale, you'll need something large-ish to just kind of do the bulk fermentation. Could be anything. Don't buy anything special, just use whatever you have. That's pretty much it though. Oh, and then you'll need a, the um, something to shape in. But again, you don't, these are like traditional kind of things. You, you can use whatever, you can definitely use whatever. So, mixer, scale, banatons, something to bulk ferment in, and something to bake in. But you, you can, use a pot with a lid. You can use anything, so please don't buy anything extra. Um, until you get into it, until you start having fun with it, until it becomes second nature, then you can you can either you know, message me, put something in the comments, or um, yeah, just, just kind of Google it, and rather just go right to YouTube and see what everybody else is using. That's all we do. For now, let's go make some bread. Boom. So we have our this is a 50-50 mix. So 
you mix the Levan the night before. So you need about 250 of the old stuff of the mother. So 250 mother plus 250 flour plus 250 um, bottled water just to be safe. And that'll get you the 500 that you need to make the recipe plus the 250 to make the next one. So you're, you're always having extra. 500 Levant, <clears throat> I just have a can of beer where you just use it till it's gone. But I always add the liquid first, so 60 mil, 60, and then tear it. I just wanna always double check, make sure we want 500 of this. So bubbly, see how that, see how that looks? It's just kinda, it's got some gaseousness. It smells really sour. So let me just make sure they're 500. Okay, I got 520. A little bit extra is fine. <clears throat> That's what we got. This is beer and fermentation. Well, fermentation and fermentation, rather. <laughs> if you haven't heard it before, um, beer and bread pretty much the same with different ratios. Mind blown. All right, so now we're back on the scale. So first I'm gonna add 700 mil of water. We need 1205 of it. So watch your scale. 1205, 1202, 1203, five. Back over to the mixer and we go to the old trusty dough hook. Okay, we're gonna do four minutes at low speed. Set a timer. This is just gonna incorporate everything. Then, after that timer goes, we're going to uh, add the salt. Use anything but iodized salt. Anything at all but iodized. We want 30 grams. Timer has gone off. Stop the mixer, add the salt, then we do one minute low. This is also, it doesn't go flying everywhere. We're gonna whack up the, uh, the speed. The speed this, is, this, this next part, I mean, I want you to remember what this looks like, because it's gonna look totally different after we do 12 minutes, medium. see that the dough is looks completely different just night and day compared to what it was and this about to you right now it's called a window pane test meaning if you it's much easier with two hands but you should be able to be see through it with that section right there so that means all oh, this kind of spider webby it's exactly what you want that's what's gonna hold your little air pockets this is just some, anything works. It doesn't be this brand. Just give it a little, little spray. I usually do this by a sink too, because it helps everything's wet. Just scrape the stuff off. Comes off pretty easy at this point. It's because, again, all the gluten strands are in line. And then we go right into here. And I also do, I will have to go to the sink because I'm gonna wet my hands, but I also do a fold here. So in effect, there's three folds, including the initial shaping. Wet hands, essential. So you just lift it up, let gravity kind of stretch itself out, and then I kind of curl it under. And as many layers as you get. So we kind of did it once that way. Then spin 90. I gotta go wet my hands again. And then just do it, do it one more time. You can see it, it doesn't stretch out as far. And this is what this is doing is building a lot of structure. 
It's building a lot of strength in this dough, which is gonna give us the loaf shape, the bubbles, everything. All right, so now we're just gonna cover this with plastic wrap. So e even though the recipe calls for two folds, that wasn't one of them. That's just something, something I do to get her going. So now, set another timer for 45 minutes. So you need to keep it in somewhere slightly, vaguely warm. You want the dough around, I think 30, 27 to 33 degrees. So this is kind of our, our plating area in this galley and there are heat lamps here. So I'm gonna flip the heat lamp on. You can see it comes, it's like there's a little bit of heat right here, no heat. So it's kind of on the edge of the heat. It's already warm from the mixer for sure. And that's, that's a good like kickstart to your process. Okay, that's our 45 minutes. Don't forget to wet the hands. So I pick it up by the middle. There's loads of different ways to do this. And just, just make as many layers as you can. You're building structure and, and by now, I mean the dough is looking really, really, really different. That's great. That is what we want. Fold number two. You're kind of letting gravity do its work. You do not want to tear it. You've spent all that time making all these lovely uh, gluten strains and lining them up. But I mean, it's much stiffer now. It's holding its little, it's holding like ridges. Yeah, right there. And so now we're gonna do it for another 45 minutes. So this is where I usually do it. Just wet my hands. Don't even like wring them off. And then again, gravity giving it a lot of its length. And then just kind of fold it. Fold it upon itself. Stretch it out. You just don't want to tear it. And you can feel your hands get, get sticky again. And then I just go 90 degrees. Build that structure one more time. It's looking really nice. It's really like, um, you can kind of see how shiny, smooth, it's really soft, it's supple. It's a lot like Play-Doh. And that, I just did the fold right there, right in the air. And then we're going to shape. And that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, that's folding in a nutshell. Like, I, like you, it's so not complicated. I did, I did two and a half folds as opposed to four, five, six, stretching across a bench like some of these people are on YouTube. It's just much of this mixing gets done like in, in the mixer as it should. You're gonna mess this up. You're gonna completely fuck this up the first time, second time. Maybe you get it right the first time, and the second time is a disaster. So. Just keep trying, like all this stuff, it just needs repetition. It just needs that, that, that tactile feel, which is very hard for me to describe to someone or to, uh, to people, but it does kind of talk to you and it tells you, tells you when it's ready or when you need to adjust, but temperature is the key. Like every time I feel that dough, it's always just kind of like, just slightly, slightly warm, slightly warm. And, and I know this video is probably gonna be really long but I'm just trying to describe the principles and the technique behind it rather than just like, I mean, some people just want to memorize. I want to know, I want to learn, I want the science behind it. That way I can speed things up, I can slow things down so I understand the whole concept or all the different concepts in the whole kind of program. So that's why I'm giving you more <laughs> easy information than you probably want or need. Some of you will appreciate it. And if you do, put it in the comments. Ask questions in the comments, I'll get back to you. All right, this is the uh, happy shaping time. This is probably the part of the process that I'm the worst at. Uh, we did a pretty thorough job on measuring everything and, and, and this is what we don't want to fuck up. So, wow, I didn't dust that very well at all. So we don't want to add more flour, that's my point. So bare minimum flour, I'm just gonna kind of spread this out. And then we're gonna dump this out after it's final. Final proof and rest. And then, um, yeah, we're gonna shape it straight away. All right, so we wanna stretch it out a little bit. Stretch, and then what we're doing is we're building surface tension on the, the, the downside. That's the important side. Kind of fold this over like that. 
And then, again, we're, we're building this skin here. So I'll fold this over. Okay, flower the hands a little bit. And the same here. We're tightening the outside skin. And then, we're gonna come down like this. And we're just gonna seal it, but we're, again, we're tightening this. Push it down, and it should be like, kind of a nice burrito um, tension, surface tension on the outside. Okay, so then we have this shape. Just get some flour down. So it's, I wouldn't say that's burrito tension, so we, we have this seam here, crossways, right? And we have these ends. So now we're gonna kind of, we're gonna go the opposite. We're building more tension laterally. And then we're gonna seal the bottom. That's kind of what I'm doing with the, scraper in my hand and I'm building tension, building tension. I could even fold that again, but I think this is going to be good. Now it's starting to get sticky on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to fold this again. It's a weird feel thing. I know it seems everyone wants definitive stuff, but how many times do you do it? Well, until it's right. Things aren't as scientific as it's hard to have it in like a text. Be like, oh, it's this many minutes or this many folds. It's just till it feels right. So I think that's a, it's gonna be a good looking loaf. Feels, feels right. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, this one feels a lot tighter at this, this stage. Believe it or not, folks, that is it. That is all the work. Wow, they look completely different. The rest of it is the fun stuff in the morning. So that's, that's it. Here we have our uh, loaves. Just shaped them. Uh, these will stay in the, uh, in the fridge overnight to be manipulated for the last time tomorrow morning. So let's fire up the oven. It's early morning. It's tricky to do this one-handed. I want 250. Full moisture. Preheat. There'll be a very sensual tone letting us know when this, this bad girl is ready to go. All right. My battery's running low. So we're I'll do this quite quickly. Obviously this came out of the fridge from overnight. Proofed. And so now we're gonna like, kinda pull them gently out. See how I kinda grip it and pull it? That should, then you just kinda let gravity do it. And then onto these pieces of parchment, which I will explain in a little bit. So I just kinda like, almost like gravity kinda help and then just pull a little bit. You don't want to knock any, knock any air out at this point. Work so hard to, uh, to take care of it and, and to keep it intact. Okay, now I got a little bit of water here and a razor blade. I'm gonna show you two different scores. So this is the kind of the normal one where you just kind of go at an angle and then across and down. So what this does is help it releases the tension of the outer skin, all that, all that tension we developed. And then uh, it also allows for the expansion. It, it's a, like a controlled expansion. It's got to come through one spot. So we can also do a little decorative pattern here. And again, the, the bread will, will like expand through those tiny cuts. It's, it's kind of a, it's a good look. And then Jaleel showed me this one, which I really like. It's kind of this S turn. So you start it here and then still at that angle come around and then turn the knife slightly and come around again it looks like shit now but it should come out pretty good this is what the parchment does it, it allows you to lift in 
and then it also allows for it to not stick to the side. And so what's going to happen is we get up these couple uh, tin foil, aluminum foil tops. I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, and what that's going to do is that's going to, and I just put it like tight enough to seal, but loose because we have to take this this off when it's going to be very hot. But you can also do this in a, in a pot, like just a pot with a cover. This is just how the quick, dirty way that we do it here. Now, that's it. I mean, we're ready to go in the oven. That's, this, is, this is by far my most favorite part of this whole process because now we have this like really violent change. These ovens are going, this is 250 Celsius. This is touching 500 Fahrenheit around there. It's quite hot. So these loaves are just gonna like, they're gonna stay in here and they're gonna, all the moisture that's gonna come out of the, that would've came out of the loaf anyway, it's gonna stay in there. So it's gonna steam. Plus we, we have the oven on full steam. So it's, even the outside is getting steamed, the inside is getting steamed and we're allowing for massive, really violent expansion because we're taking the, all the cold air bubbles in this dough are gonna get super heated. So what happens when you heat air? It expands. Let's put them in. So we have our very hot 250 degree oven. We have our bread ready to go in and um, set a timer for 25 minutes. After that, we're gonna take the top off. We're gonna then, then it switches to like a dry heat. So we're going from like a wet heat to a dry heat. So uh, the dry heat will then, the, the wet heat made like a gummy kind of steam bun kind of crust. And then the dry heat is gonna put like a crispy shell on the outside of that. So you have this really thick, chewy, uh, bite to it, because that's that's what we're after. Uh, so I'm gonna chuck them in the oven. Oh, it's hot, hot and wet. And then I like to put a little steam burst on there. Set the timer 25 minutes, and that is how we go. We. Um, they wait, but this is, the, this is the best part. I know it's being dramatic and I'm being a little bit facetious here, just talking a lot of shit, but I love unwrapping those things because when they come out, you don't know, did all of that effort work? Did all those little like nuances, all those little steps, all those little like kind of scientific principles, did they actually work? Or did you just waste a shitload of time? I don't know yet. We'll find out when we unwrap the Christmas presents. <laughs> dry portion of the bake. A lot less water. So this is this is what they look like when they come out of the, the wet steamy part. Put it in there. Put it right on the rack. And they're they're hot but they're quite like underdone in the middle of them. And then we just put it on the uh, 20 minutes, and this is obviously specific to this oven, and we turn the fan down one little bit, and that just keeps the, a lot of, a lot less color with that one kind of notch of fan down. Should be good. Also, 20 minutes, we done. Nice ear. <laughs> so nice. This is like, bread is like meat too. You, you gotta let this, let this rest. Like, what do you think, Julio? An hour? Yeah. 45 minutes at least? At least, yeah. And that, that prevents you from like, when you cut it, being all, all gummy and weird and sticking to your knife and getting gross. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. A nice rustic loaf. Excellent. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that crumb. Looking good. Very sexually viable. Let's see what we got. There's some more sliced up over here. I had to leave for customs, so I didn't really get to slice it myself. 
or take it out of the oven. But yeah, chrome's a little, little dense there. But then, yeah, it's good loaf. Can't recommend um, rye flour as a leavener enough. It's got some power, and look at the color. I mean, it's, it's like, just looks better. It looks healthier than the uh, stark white loaf. Yeah, rye flour, all day, er day. That is it for sourdough. The, uh, I guess the, the, the final closing message I would, I would like to give or advice is just keep trying it. Um, since I filmed that, like my bread has gotten much better and it's just the repetition. And some days don't feel so good. You're like, that didn't come out. That was a waste of time. Uh, and, but you learn from kind of the familiarity of the, of the entire process and what feels right and what doesn't feel right. And also kind of you find these little tricks to, uh, to rectify mistakes and, and get to, you, you basically want the, the dough puffy and, and lively. And then, uh, but yeah, just keep trying. I'll post stuff in the comments if any questions or anything I got wrong, just chuck a little, chuck a little comment there and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you and uh, try to figure out if you're, if you're hitting a roadblock of some sort. And uh, you know, if I can't figure it out, then I'll just ask uh, Jaleel who's right over here. <laughs> who's the bread master. Yeah, this is uh, Jaleel's starter. We also haven't named it, so put some names in the comments. One's uh, Patty, Patty named his Clint Eastwood. There's a, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some really, really funny ones. See what you can come up with. I hope you liked it. See you next time. <laughs>